Hey, what's up? My name is Paul Miller, aka DJ Spooky, and I'm a writer, artist, and musician. And uh, I'm here at the Dallas Museum, and we're kind of going to be talking about Marcel Duchamp a little bit, and his relationship to my work, and my work's relationship to his work, and all this kind of metaphorical kind of connections. I'd say Duchamp influenced my work and a lot of the issues that I think about right now for the 21st century because we're looking at not only is there a vast difference between when you have mechanical forms of reproduction and you have you know machines and factories and all the kind of stuff that the 20th century really was trying to come to grips with. A lot of artists, um, say for example around World War I people came home from the war and they had realized all these machines were being used for, in all these radically different ways. So you had all these movements come out of people who were literally almost veterans. So for example, the Italian futurists or some of the, uh, like Jean Cocteau. And so Duchamp, to me at least, was a cipher translating a lot of the industrial era's fascination with speed, efficiency, and the kind of fragmentation of human form. And it hits this kind of wall, of, you know, kind of for lack of a better word, the machine produced aesthetic. So Cubism and his early work and the paintings and so on, when the, when the sort of perspective became more fragmented, to me, it's like right now what we're seeing with, with software and webs and like it was sort of the icon of the pixel. I do a lot of video art, multimedia, and also you know kind of looking at the installational relationship to how we use software. But if software can change any perspective and any kind of font and color pattern and so on, that's to me at least looking at the style itself as a kind of a font. So Duchamp was like an artist who got that very early and was able to kind of pull meaning from this idea of the found object. So for me as an artist, the connection comes from looking at not only found objects and how people look at the environment around them as a kind of a manufactured process, but also kind of looking at a very uneasy relationship between nature and artificial. Uh, which in the 21st century right now, we're getting more and more into this world where, you know, you pick up the phone and the, the, you don't even know if it's a human being. It could be a simulation, again, a found sound. Or do you think you're dialing somebody in, in Illinois, but the phone call goes to Bangalore, India. These kinds of simulations and uncertainties about human and post-human and so on, I think Duchamp really got a lot of that. Compositionally speaking, my relationship and his work comes from a very straightforward critique of this one piece he did called Errata Musicale, uh, which was a piece that he made of kind of a deck of cards that was meant to be used as a compositional kind of um, strategy. And people would have to pick material from the deck and then sing the motifs that were inspired by the card. And it was a game he used to play with his sisters. So what I did was update that. Uh, for a 21st century kind of take and use software to edit together a, a series of found sounds that were kind of put in a series of random juxtapositions. My piece was called Arata Arata, uh, which is a pun about, you know, kind of looking at uh, music made of errors, uh, which if you think about software and glitches and like when the software doesn't work and stuff like that, I think there's still a, a very fun relationship to Duchamp's kind of critique of musical improvisation. And what I wanted to do uh, with the CD and composition that I made around Duchamp was say, what happens when you look at the compositional process in a digital age is being uncertain about the origin of the sounds, the sequence of the sounds, and also the kind of environment of that we perceive uh, sound. Look at bats, they use sonar, you know, and they'll be able to navigate around. But for us, we navigate through sampling and fragments of memory and so on. And that's my compositional strategy. So Duchamp, fragments, errors, glitches, becomes, you know, uh, a rata, a rata. Well, at the end of the day, um, whenever you guys see this image and you see me speaking, this is a found image that you're going to be seeing that's been edited, spliced, diced, and put someplace on a website server or in a video clip someplace. So the pun here is that I and the words I'm speaking can be sampled and probably maybe will be. So the image and the recording itself is going to be a found experience. And what I want people to think about with DJ culture and mixes and the, the kind of style that I uh, look at that inspired my DJing and my art and my writing was saying what happens when composition and compositional strategy 
kind of blur. So it's a process because anybody can take this image and these sounds and run with it in any direction. For all I know, you could edit me into Mickey Mouse and Mickey Mouse could be speaking about Duchamp and, you know, remix Warhol, photoshopped over it or something and that would be the same kind of pun. Here we are in the 21st century where the artist has to, I think, at least use software not only as a basic tool, but also to say, look, the 20th century was about mass production. That's what Duchamp was really critiquing. The 21st century, to me at least, is about mass customization, where you're always going to make your own version. That's what the playlist is about on your iPod. That's what, when you upload your cameras and images online to Flickr and so on, that's the same thing. The same thing happens with Wikipedia, when people are selecting bits and pieces of discourse. So it's become a kind of a vocabulary that many people are familiar with, and the DJ and artist are someone who navigates these kinds of informational terrain. So hopefully you guys out there in the world, hey, um, just keep that in mind, and that's what makes it all kind of spooky. There we go. All right.